welcome back to the final video for this project. Now, before we post process, and I know that's what you want to do, you want to post this out, you want to run it on the machine, you want to cut your part, but there's a couple things you need to do first. Here's what we're going to do. First, I have a manager down here called Cutting Conditions. I'm going to turn it off and show you how to get to it in case yours isn't there. There's two ways. One is to go to the 7 icon, View, and find Cutting Conditions. Boom, it's back. The other way is on any black bar of any manager open, you can right click and get cutting conditions. Now the reason I bring this up is because I want to make sure that I have set my feeds and speeds correctly for everything. And here, look, I made a mistake. These two side millings, and as I mouse over them, you're seeing them highlight on this screen up here, by the way. I forgot to set their RPM, so I'm going to hold my left button down, drag my mouse down to what I want to change, and I'm going to set this all to 8000, hit enter. That set them both. I'm also going to set their chip load maybe to five thousandths, just to be a little bit different. Cool. I'm going to scroll down, look at everything else. Everything else honestly looks pretty good, except for these drillings. I didn't set anything appropriately there. Let's set those all to 7,500 for right now. And then let's maybe go ahead and set all of these, including this bottom one, to five thou. Good enough. And you get the idea. So now I have everything set the way I want. I can minimize that. Now, this has made portions of the tool paths go partially dirty. We have two regeneration commands up here. This one regenerates all the tool path and recalculates tool path. This one recalculates minor changes such as feeds and speeds or approach moves and things like that. So it's really fast. Just make sure you use the right one at the right time. Now that that's done, I'm going to hit save once. And quickly, we'd like to verify this, right? So if I go to verify, I'm going to go to my verify button and I'm going to hit play. Now, I have machine simulation turned on, so we're going to see that part show up in the verification. When I do that, perfect, there's my JAWS, I'm going to hit play, and we're going to see the actual animation of material removal with machine simulation. That's right, Top Solid gives you machine simulation during the programming experience, as well as in the verification of the programming experience. And you're going to see everything move here, check that out. So in real time, we can check for collisions against everything. And after all, isn't that why you buy a solution like TopSolid? You want to make sure that everything is spot on and perfect so that when you post process, you can just hit cycle start on your machine. Now at this point, we've all seen verifications before, so I'm going to kind of kick out of this thing and do two more final steps. One is I want to make a setup sheet. Setup sheets are important. They're important, especially if you want the setup guy to know what it is he's going to be cutting. So to make a setup sheet, I'm going to right click up here on my machining tab and I'm going to go to drafting. Now Top Solid ships with a bunch of sample setup sheets. I'm going to choose one of those right here and I'm going to hit the green check mark. When I do that, you're going to see a Top Solid draft document get generated, but it's going to generate with a wicked amount of awesome information. First, it tells you so total cycle time, number of machining operations, number of tools, the creation date, the last date it was screwed with, what revision it's on, the name of the cam file, the name of the cutting tool, the tool number, the diameter, the gauge distance, that's the stick out distance of the tool, speeds and feeds, the name of the operation, the cycle time of the operation, where is your G54.1 on this one? Awesome. And oh, by the way, just because we can, there's a picture of the tool path with the updated stock model as well. And guess what? We did this for every single operation. In fact, I made automatically 19 pages of information for you to set up this job. Think about that. Every origin displayed perfectly. Every tool path displayed perfectly. And hey, did I forget to mention, this is top solid drafting environment. You know what that means? That means I can come in here and I could add whatever information I want for my setup guy. Hey, that's a critical dimension. Would you check that? Hey, that's a critical dimension. Would you check that? Add annotations, add notes, add whatever you need to add. And here's the best part. This is parametrically linked back to the CAM file, which is parametrically linked back to the design file. So if you make a design change, even if that design change comes from another CAD software, everything updates. Think about the amount of time that saves you in your manufacturing process. I'm going to go ahead and save my setup sheet. This way it's part of the project. And the last thing I'm going to do, go back to machining, and we're going to post process, and we'll call it a day. So in my Operations tab, I can go to the Operations pull-down menu, click Generate ISO. I can go to the icon here, Generate ISO. I can Control-A in here, right-click, 
generate ISO. It doesn't matter how you get there. You can just get there. And here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to find a post processor. We're going to use one for the Makino. I'm just going to temp, uh, go to my temp directory here. I'm going to hit save. And away we go. Now, at this point, here we go. We have information. We have some basic tool numbers being used. Uh, then tool calls, spindle, 54.1, P1. Hey, look at that. We're staging C1. Cool. And away you go. And now we're just cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting. And if I do a little search, I'm going to do a control F for the next note because that's just the fastest way. Boom, 54.1 P5. Here we go. Height offset, B90, go, and away you go. Next. And next. Cool. And now here's the next staging of the KME work holder. And again, you get the idea. This toolpath is ready to rock. It should run beautifully on this machine. And we've just machined our part on a complex fixture, on a complex tombstone, without wasting a lot of time guessing at where everything is at. Hope you enjoyed the video. Check back soon for more.